Game On magazine is at the University of Pretoria where we have sat down with Max Carlitz who plays centre for UP Tux in the Varsity Cup. Welcome Max. Uh, let's start off with, uh, you've been a part of the Tux system for a while now and uh, you've, just made it, you've just made it into the Varsity Cup team. Talk us through going through the system as a student who just happens to play rugby. Um, well, I started playing for Tux in my first year of university, um, which is about four years ago. Um, I'm presently doing my honours. Um, I started in the under-20 under 20 system. Um, it was a, a very small league at that point in time, um, just playing in the league as for the Tux club. Um, and then throughout the year, we grew, of course, as a team and we ended up winning the league. And then I played one or two games for the, the second team um, in my second year of study. And then in my third year of study, I started uh, playing for the Tux 1 first team just in the Colton Cup um, and the Asa Bowl. And at the end of last year, um, I got put in the Varsity Cup squad and then uh, persevered through the squad and now I'm playing Varsity Cup in 2016. Varsity Cup puts a big emphasis on studies. Do you guys as, as student rugby players see the emphasis that Varsity Cup is doing? What is the process with Varsity Cup and, and having to study? Well, you, firstly, you have to um, attain a certain number of credits in your previous year of study. Um, you have to be a registered student. Uh, the Varsity Cup, Varsity Cup has become very pertinent on uh, checking. They audit, they get an auditing company to come audit the, the, the credits and make sure that they are valid students playing in the Varsity Cup. Um, there were, of course, lots of guys in the squad that were initially in the squad, but because, because of the fact they didn't achieve enough credits, they weren't able to participate in this year's Varsity Cup. So the emphasis on academics is a, a very, very present one, present one. You're currently doing your honours in construction management. What are the difficulties of being an athlete and having to study at the same time? Uh, well, I believe it all comes down to time management in the end. Um, I'm lucky, lucky enough to be in my honours, so I don't have class on a Monday and a Friday. But from Tuesday to Thursday, um, I've got to manage a lot of time. I mean, we train six to seven hours a day. Um, and therefore I sometimes have to miss a few classes so um, there needs to be understanding on both the, the academic part from my lecturers and the sporting part from my coaches to make it a successful environment. Being surrounded by a lot of players who are contracted to the Bulls did you ever think that you would make the Varsity Cup squad and now that you're in the squad and and playing in the Varsity Cup what would you say to students who are who want to play Varsity Cup but uh, may feel intimidated by the fact that there are professional players within the team? Well, I think if you're good enough, they can't ignore you. I mean, um, I think my self-determination over the years has just prevailed. Um, I haven't stopped. I've been at all the practices. I've persevered. Um, and I also believe that if you, the, the more you practice, the luckier you get. You know, I feel like I was lucky enough that the, in the Varsity Cup set up this year in my position inside and outside centre, the, the the amount of the, well, the amount of players and the the guys they needed weren't really there, and they looked to someone like me that has been in the club for year, four years and hasn't stopped practicing and playing um, at a certain level, and they just started putting some belief in in the club system as well, and into guys that have been been at Tux and are students as well. What would you say are the major strengths of the Varsity Cup system, having now been a part of it for the last couple of weeks? Um, well, system. Yeah, the Varsity Cup. How they do things. How they, the, the competition itself, the, the the ability of the players you're playing against. Uh, well, I think that it's a, it's definitely, it's definitely well organised. I mean, um, all the players get an opportunity to be to get exposure, massive exposure, um, and I think it's it brings out the best in you. You know, like you only. You, you, you get given an opportunity to perform in a team, like you said, has, that has contracted players. And for someone like me um, to be playing with some, some, some of the guys from the Bulls setup is amazing, you know. Um, we, we train a lot, do lots of video work, um, and it just brings the best out of each, each individual in the team. And it also forces the guys um, in the team to become a real, real unit. Um, yeah, and I think the Varsity Cup, just, like I said, brings out the best out of each player or each team that participates in it. Let's focus a little bit on you as as just a, an everyday bloke. How did you get involved with rugby? Uh, is it something you started when you were young? Something that you started at school? How did it happen? Well, um, 
I first started playing rugby when I was only in high school. I was 14 years old. Um, I went to Pretoria Boys where, we, where you start playing rugby from a young age. Um, and I just fell in, in, in love with the sport, you know. Um, at that point in time, the likes of France, well, France Stain, um, massive idol for me, someone that I looked up to because um, he was young and up and coming at that point in time. And I just think that it was, it was, it was being able to watch a sport like that and it, it's, it's just the South African culture and I just got addicted to it. And I mean, and since then it's just been, it's been a love for me. You've dealt with a lot of frustration being part of the tuck system for so long and only being recognized now. Who has been your support base? Well, um, that is most probably the most important thing in my life is my support base and that con consists of my family mostly, my, my dad and my sisters and of, of course my girlfriend. Um, you mean, they make lots of time, they're understanding, um, they're there for me, um, they're there for me when I play. Um, my dad gives me lots of moral support, both my mom and my dad give me lots of moral support, you know, they're able to guide me and they're always there to support me. They've never, they've never put a doubt in my mind that I'm, that I'm not good enough or that I can't do anything. Um, my girlfriend makes sure that I'm always eating well and that I'm at practices on time and yeah, they definitely play a major role. So I definitely say my support base is my family and then of course my friends, you know, my friends always have either a joke or some advice to give and that's really important, you know, that keeps you going. And yeah, it just makes it so much more fun. Let's talk a little bit about your training programs and your eating plans. How often do you train and what sort of diet do you follow? Well, um, training wise, um, we, we train at about, from about 6 to half past 9 in the mornings. That, in, that might include a video session or team talk with a, a split session where the backs do their skills and uh, handling and then uh, the forwards do line outs etc. And then after that we have a gym until about, like I said, 9, 9, 10 ish. And then I normally attend my classes after that. And then about 3 or 4 o'clock we have a, another session where it's a team session which will be an attack or a defense session for about uh, 2 hours. And in terms of your eating plan, do you follow a specific diet? Um, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say very, a very, very strict diet, but I do try and focus on um, eating the right foods. Um, lots of proteins and carbs and then of course trying to keep as much water in my system as possible um, yeah you just explained to us your training program which is pretty hectic considering you're studying as well the coaching staff are they lenient when it comes to a degree do they understand that your degree comes first um yeah they definitely are but I mean I believe that you can't be a coach in the varsity cup uh, a student-based uh, competition where guys are studying and not not be lenient towards the studies um, I mean I wrote test week I've rewritten my first test week for this year and the coaches were more and more than accommodating um, to let me go right and study as hard as I could you've you know in varsity cup which gives which gives you the ability to perform to a national audience with the, because of the fact that most of the games are televised do you have rugby aspirations? Would you like to play rugby at a professional level? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I mean, that's every guy's, I mean, well, in the varsity cup setup, that's everyone's dream. Um, of course, I'd love to play, love to play for the Blitzbook or the Springboks. Um, I mean, it's definitely a, it's every boy's dream in the country. Um, I think that it, it also depends on how well I play in the varsity cup, you know. Um, I need to take this opportunity to ensure that the, the exposure I get is that I can make the most of the exposure I get because at the end of the day that will determine my determine how far I get or how much I achieve in the long run. You spoke about Franz Stein being one of your idols. Are there any, is there anybody else that you look up to that is a bit closer to home? I mean in terms of South African players? No, in anyone. Is there uh, people that you've grown up with, people that have taught you coaches from past experiences that have helped you to get to where you are today? Um, I definitely say my coach or my coach throughout the years at Tux, Marinus van der Vaart, um, he, he, he took me under his wing when we were about under 20 and he was my backline coach under 20 um, in the second team and in the first team um, for the last three or four years. He definitely, he, he definitely knows how to get a player to play for him um, yeah, and he taught me a lot you know from coming out of high school um, I think my game has improved massively. Max, you are busy completing your honours and you've got your undergrad already. Talk us through the importance of, of pursuing a degree when you're an athlete in terms of the fact that your career can end at any time due to injury. 
What, what are your thoughts on, on studying for a debut and still being able to play, not just rugby, but any type of sport? Well, um, like you just mentioned, um, the, the value of studying is, is of paramount importance as a sport like rugby, especially in a contact sport, I mean, you can, you can play into maybe your mid-30s at most. Um, and then you need, to fall, you need to have something to fall back on. And I think that's where academics and being able to study something really comes in handy. Um, you're able to also mentally, um, it will mentally grow um, because you expose yourself to something totally different. I mean, sitting in a class and um, broadening in your mind is, is, is far different from running on a rugby field than passing a ball. Um, and I think also, you know, that aspect also, it helps. I feel like my academic side really helps me rugby wise. Um, you know, you're able to, your decision making on the field um, and also just small, small, small decision, like I said, small decisions are just far more faster and yeah, I think it makes a massive difference. And then of course when you're done, you're able to, to, to start a career or do something that's totally different. Maybe if you're tired of playing and you've retired, now you can start your career in maybe becoming a lawyer <clears throat> or an accountant. And then of course the, it goes hand in hand as well because I mean being a rugby player or sportsman you've made many connections, you've made many friends and by then you, you most probably can f find a job fairly easily um, since you've, made, you've net network, networked so well and you've got an like, abundance of people to speak to. FNB UP Texas struggled in the 2016 Varsity Cup. What is the atmosphere and the emotion of the players what is the attitude of the players in camp, uh, and what is t what are the guys? What are you guys doing in order to rectify your season, having lost three from three? Well, firstly, you know um, that was definitely not our plan. You know, we we, we planned to win our first three, but uh, no one can change that. And I think you know after each game, uh, we've lost, of course, and after the loss, you know, we of course we're very upset, and the heads are down, and we. Are, you know, we can't do anything about you can't do anything about the loss. You know, no one does anything on purpose. There's no one to blame, but the team and uh, ourselves. Um, I think you know, in order to, to get better, we need to, of course, change a few fundamental things. I think in all three games, we just haven't um, kept to our game plan as well as we should have. And uh, I think it will come in time. You know, um, we're a fairly young side that are, of guys that haven't really haven't really played a lot together, and I think that will come in time. Um, and as soon as as soon as we become, I think we we're not a, we're not a, a, a strong unit as we can be. As soon as we, that unit and that unit becomes stronger, I think we'll end up winning a, a far far more games. Well, Gamma Magazine wishes you all the best and FNB UP Tucks all the best in the future. Thank you so much for joining us at Gamma Magazine and good luck. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks, team.